but now nothing was sacred. Seeking to reinvigorate its output, the BBC gave opportunities to young writers and illustrators, including David McKee. My mother told stories and was a good storyteller. When my father told what had happened uh, while he was away or whatever, it was always recounted uh, as a story. At school, they told stories. In Scouts and the Cubs, they told stories. Our friends told stories. Gradually, I told stories first to myself and then to other people. And the first books I did were on, on stories that, uh, that I'd actually told to friends. Though he was a very conventional character, Mr. Ben's visits to a fancy dress shop took him on exotic adventures. The jaunty theme tune had been composed by McKee's friend, Duncan Lamont, even before the character had been fleshed out. And I said, Duncan, it's, that's it, that's fantastic. Don't, don't look for anything else, that, that, that's the tune. Mr. Ben was indoors reading a newspaper. Mr. Ben, I wanted to be uh, a Mr. Everybody. I wanted Mr. Ben to be the kind of person that anybody could associate with. At number 52, Mr. Ben looked out of his window. And the kind of road in which he lived, it was important that that was also not something too posh or too poor, but uh, just an ordinary road. Inside the shop, as if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Good morning, sir, he said. Which costume would you like to try today? I wanted it to be a real adventure because uh, I used to get really annoyed when I'd read a fantastic story and the whole trip ended in being a dream. Uh, so Mr Ben's adventures had to be real adventures. We want you to cook something that will make her want to eat. And that was one of the reasons he always brought back a souvenir with him to remind him and you don't bring back souvenirs from dreams, you see. Um, what shall I do with this wooden spoon, he asked. You can keep that, sir, said the shopkeeper. In fact, McKee only ever produced 14 episodes of Mr Ben, but the BBC has repeated the series more than 40 times. The fact that it was the fruit of a single vision, rather than the mass-produced output from an animation production line, may account for its success. Nobody worried me. I, I made the films the way I wanted to. There, were, there was no committee decisions to, to weaken everything down. So the films would be stronger because it was one voice, I believe. Um, and I think even if that one voice has mistakes in it, it, it has a lot more authenticity or a lot more character.